Well, I lack transition effects, so here's a picture of my shower curtain. So every day at the day job, myself and my coworkers help people select components for custom PC builds. And one of the uh, things people ask for is RGB lighting. Um, if they like the look, they want it. Um, but, you know, it gets frustrating a little bit explaining to them that not everything just works together. Not everything is just going to be synchronized. And it leaves them with the question of, uh, you know, should I do RGB at all? And if I do do RGB, do I have to buy everything from one manufacturer? Or do I have to just pick one lighting standard that other companies may have adopted? So take my build, for example. Um, this build is maybe about 10 or 11 months old now. And the most visible pieces are the Trident Z RAM. Uh, that's the R RGB version of their uh, DIMMs for DDR4 that are AuraSync by ASUS capable. So the motherboard, which is AuraSync, will allow me to control the lighting on the motherboard itself, the RAM, the lighting on the Strix 1080 Ti video card, or any Strix video card you may have, as well as these deep cool RGB strips that I have hiding behind the, the front and the bottom lip of the case, just for extra a little bit of a ambience. And that brings you to the problem of how do I synchronize the components that are not Aura Sync. So in my case, I have an HADI V2 liquid cooler that uses Link. I have Corsair's HD120 fans that don't hook up to anything. So the way those come is you get a controller where you control speed, color, lighting pattern, but it doesn't give you much in the way of customization. And to be honest, as much as I love Corsair, um, that controller sucks. I'm sorry. There's not enough, you know, customization there. The Corsair K55 keyboard, uh, if you want to control the lighting on this through software, you have to run Corsair Q. So Corsair Link, Corsair Standalone Controller, Corsair Q, and Asus Aura. And you wonder why people get frustrated with RGB or attempt it at all. You know, you even see guys that are either downplaying RGB or trying to avoid the issue, for lack of a better word, because it is sort of, you know, a mess in terms of what goes together, what can synchronize. So, I've got here a Commander Pro from Corsair, and that's going to hopefully allow me to tackle the first issue I have, which is the fans. They are the odd man out. There's nothing controlling them other than that standalone controller. And then what's going to happen is, once I have them hooked up to the Commander Pro, that's going to be hooked up to the... USB headers of the motherboard so that I can control it with Corsair's Link software. So that allows me the potential to, through software, synchronize the lighting with Corsair and Asus, in my case. We're going to see how that goes, uh, and hopefully uh, we can satisfy the perfectionist in me and make this lighting effect even better, because as it stands now, you can find a pattern that's close, but it's no cigar because the timings are wrong and very quickly things fall out of sync and just sort of look like, uh, you know, nothing's uh, organized. So let's see how she goes. Let's synchronize everything. So let's take this thing apart. All right, so we've got our Commander Pro right here. And on this... Uh unit there's actually a USB hub so it's actually taking a USB header on the motherboard and if that happens to be the only one you have it gives you two more so it's actually a USB hub um, the Commander Pro also came with temperature sensor uh, wires but I'm not actually bothering with those because really all I'm after is getting the 
HD120 Corsair fans hooked up to the USB headers on the motherboard so I can control them with software. I've gotten rid of this controller which was mounted on the front of my in-win case and with the uh, Corsair uh, three pin little uh, proprietary connector there where it used to go is now where the Commander Pro plugs in to control the individually addressable RGB lights. So really, I bought this whole thing to connect one wire in essence. Pretty cool. So I'll clean up these cables a bit more once I'm sure it's uh, going to work the way I want it to. So let's uh, put it all back together and see how she goes. And by the way, this is way more work than I bargained for. It's taking longer than it should. All right, we did her. It was nice while it lasted. They're looking pretty, but something broke with the uh, synchronization. I can no longer take control of the fans through Aura. Not sure what's happening. I do like this pattern though. So it turned out to be a, a little bit of a glitch with Asus Aura. I had to go into my BIOS and I had to toggle the uh, RGB headers off and back on again and then let the Aura program redetect everything. So if you guys are ever having any um, problem with um, Aura Sync program, looks like you have to go into your BIOS. Just a tip. So I've got everything back together now and as you can see the HD120 fans are now um, synchronized with the or effect lighting of the motherboard, the video card, and the RGB strips in the case. And the way we've done this is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the fans are hooked through a Corsair Commander Pro, which allows me to uh, basically hook those up to the motherboard and control them through software. Um, Corsair meant to for us to do it with their Link software. Um, which has its own patterns and, and you can configure things very nicely. Um, but in this case, because we wanted everything to synchronize with the Aura, um, we've used the uh, SDKs from Asus and Corsair to basically make a little bit of a hack. And now they are actually controlled through the Asus Aura software. Um, so right now I've got the rainbow effect happening. Um, I could do other effects here too. I can just go yellow for high contrast here. And as you can see, everything's synchronized up. So Corsair and Asus Aura are now playing nice together. And uh, I've been having actually a little bit of fun with this thing, especially with the, uh, the music sequence, because what I didn't know before, if I apply it here, is that um, not only is it uh, reactive to whatever sound you have playing, but it's also reactive to the software volume. So as I turn a volume slider up and down, the uh, lights in the case will actually dim. Uh, so if I just continue on here, so it's off right now. As soon as I turn on this uh, music, As I dim the volumes uh, down, the lights dim down as well, which I think is kind of neat. But turn it up slowly, it goes brighter. So that's all working great. The only thing left for Asus to do is actually come up with some more lighting effects. Um, the Aura program, I find, doesn't have that many great effects and not a whole heck of a lot of customization ability. Usually I leave it on rainbow. But uh, I don't know, I'm going to have a lot of fun with this I think. I'm going to try and uh, make my own lighting effects and if I do I'll, uh, I'll post that too. Peace.